Welcome to Praise Assembly Church Ministries, a community church focused on family, individual growth, and most importantly, the Word of God. We are here to share the love of Jesus Christ, encourage kingdom living, and equip you with the tools you will need to live the abundant life God has promised. Today you will hear an uplifting word from God shared by our pastor, Dr. Johnny L. York. It is our prayer that you will receive a personal message from the Lord today. Thank you for tuning in. Now, let's join our Praise service. Let me have a seat in the presence of the Lord. I want to go back and review our intent and purpose and goal for the final time at this point in this series. The intent of this series entitled Repurposed is to understand that repurposing allows us to stay current with the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit is doing in our contemporary, when we allow God to repurpose us, we stay current with the move of the Holy Spirit. The purpose of this series is to believe that no experiences in life are ever a waste to God. Every experience we had in life, God will use it to bring glory to him and to his kingdom and be a blessing to us and a blessing through us. And the goal of this series is to allow God to repurpose our pain into praise and our trials into treasures. Today we'll be speaking from the subject matter by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is someone who is seldom recognized, known by a majority of people around the world. He has wisdom that is often ignored. But he is blamed for most of the behavior of Christians. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. If you ask the average Christian about the Holy Spirit, you would find very few would know anything about who he is. The Holy Spirit is God. And God is one. But God manifests himself in, 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 in three distinct persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they all are God. The Holy Spirit is the power of God, and he was the first person of the Godhead that got himself involved in the act of creation or repurposing the earth. The Holy Spirit is not wind. He's not a bird. The Holy Spirit is not fire. The Holy Spirit is not a force. The Holy Spirit is a person. And Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as he or him. The Holy Spirit is this person that every believer needs to learn who he is and every believer needs to learn how to walk with him. Now in the Gospel of St. John, let's look at this, John chapter 14, we'll begin here. We'll be reading verses 16 through 18. Jesus makes some interesting points in his conversation to the disciples and, and I want to just go through this and, and, and sort of dig out some things that are in here that we often overlook concerning the Holy Spirit and we're going to see how this ties into being repurposed. Verse 16, John chapter 14. And I will pray the Father, Jesus says, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Jesus had spoken earlier that he was leaving he said in chapter 14, it is expedient for you that I go away. It is to your best advantage that I go away from you. And Jesus comes here in his conversation and says, and I'm going to pray to the Father that he will give you another comforter. I know I've been with you all these years, three years, but I'm going to ask the Father to give you another comforter because I'm going to be going away. And this other comforter is going to replace my physical presence in the earth. Now, that's important for us to understand. 
The physical presence of Jesus has been replaced in the earth with his Holy Spirit. So whatever Jesus did while he was in the earth, the Holy Spirit of God is in the earth to do the same things that Jesus did. That, 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 is, that is some introductory things about the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, knoweth him, neither knoweth him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because they don't see him. They don't know him. Now, this is interesting because this, look, I want you to listen to this. The world or unbelievers do not acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's take that just a step deeper. Even some Christians do not acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can listen in their conversation. An unsaved person gets blessed, but they don't call it a blessing. They say, I earned it. I worked hard for it. I was lucky. I networked. I know the right people. Unbelievers and people who do not acknowledge the Holy Spirit never give God credit for anything. Oh, my God. Even in the body of Christ. They will not give God credit because they try to figure it out. They want to look good. They want it all to be about them. But Jesus says the world, so he's classified people who do not acknowledge the Holy Ghost as being part of the world. Don't see him and they don't know him. And verse 18 says, but I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will not leave you as orphans. The same Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, that was active in creation is the same Holy Spirit that indwells every believer. The same Holy Spirit that was active in creation, that moved upon the earth when it was dark and void and without form, a state of confusion, that same Holy Spirit that was hovering over the earth is the same Holy Spirit that indwells every person who confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. Same power lives inside of you and I. Jesus calls him the comforter. The one who's been called alongside to help us. Now, now here is where I want your minds to open up and your hearts to open up. The Holy Spirit responsibility is to glorify Jesus. But Jesus says he is the comforter. He has been charged to come alongside to help us. I don't know about you, but there have been times in my life since I've been saved, I've needed help and I didn't know where it was coming from. There were things that I could not do. There were things that folk couldn't give me the answers to. I needed help. And the only one who would give me help in the earth realm is the Holy Spirit of God. Glory, glory, glory. He helps, the repurp he helps to repurpose us and he empowers us to become who we were created to be. He helps to repurpose us and he helps to empower us to become who God created us to be. The Greek word for the comforter is called, you know, it's, it's called parakletos. Parakletos is the Greek word for it. But it's hard to find a single English word that describes this Greek word parakletos, parakletos. Because the English language is not as, as fluid with words as the Greek. So the Amplified Bible gives us some indication of what parakletos or the comforter is. Let me just read these names out to you. The Amplified Bible says parakletos means 
counselor. If you've ever really needed to know the truth about something, then the Holy Spirit of God who indwells you confirms what you hear in his truth. For instance, when you are in church and I'm teaching from the Bible, I'm teaching truth from the Bible. And if you have truth on the inside of you by the Holy Spirit, when I read the word of God, something's going to acknowledge that this is truth on the inside. And most times people say, hallelujah, glory to lift your hands or say, or some just say, mm. Mm. that's an indication that you have received truth. That's the Holy Spirit's word. He's also called the helper, the comforter and the helper or the counselor and the helper. Helper means he has been called to help you in ministry and he's been called to help you in whatever you do in life. On your job, at home, whatever it is, the Holy Spirit is the helper that God has given to us. Instead of Jesus being physically here, his Holy Spirit is here to help us become what God called us to be. He's also called the intercessor. Now this is, I like this. The intercessor. The intercessor means that he prays for us according to the will of God. For see, the Bible says that we don't know what to pray for as we ought. It's not that I don't know how to pray. There are times I don't know what to pray for or how to pray for it. Because I don't want to pray for something that's against the will of God. I know what I want. And I, I don't want to have my desires as a part of my prayer all the time. I want my prayers to be in line with God. So, so this, oh, I can't do this. There's a part, there's something God has given to me that's in my spirit, that's in my, that indwells my body. The Holy Ghost of God that says when I, when I come to in, God in prayer, God, I don't know what to pray. I don't know how to pray for this. I don't know what to do. Guess who kicks in? Boom! The intercessor. He prays for the saints according to the will of God. He's also called our advocate. Which simply means this. The Holy Ghost always has your back. Folk will turn their face on you. Folk will talk about you. Folk will set you up. Folk will try to manipulate you. But the Holy Ghost got my back. He's known as a strengthener. He strengthens the inner man. Makes sure that I'm strong on the inside. He's called the standby. The Holy Spirit is available 24-7. Now for some of you, let me tell you what that means. He never goes on vacation. <laughs> Glory. The Holy Spirit is the power of God seen in creation. He's seen in repurposing the earth. He's seen in salvation. And he's seen in repurposing mankind. But sadly, not every believer welcomes the full power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Let's talk about this just for a second. Because a person has the Holy Spirit, gets the Holy Spirit, receives the Holy Spirit at salvation, the Spirit of God, you and I will automatically go to heaven. The Holy Spirit is our ticket to heaven. And as long as I'm going to heaven, some folk are satisfied. But there's a little bit more that the Holy Spirit wants to do. There's more to come after salvation. Look at John chapter 20. 
I want you to follow something here. John chapter 20, verses 21 and 22. Now, this is when Jesus comes after he has been, he was resurrected. He goes, he's walking around and he, the disciples are gathered in a room, locked doors are locked up, windows are locked, they're scared. They're eating dinner. And all of a sudden, the doors are locked, the windows are closed. Jesus walks through the walls. Guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> yeah, this ain't Sydney. <laughs> and Jesus comes through the doors. And all his disciples are there. But there's something distinctive that happens here. 21, then said Jesus to them, peace be unto you. As my father had sent me, even so send I you. As the father has sent me, I'm sending you also. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. When you receive your initial reception of the Holy Ghost is salvation. This is when the disciples got saved. Prior to this time, they were followers of Jesus. And, and see, listen, there are a whole lot of folk in every church who are followers of Jesus, but they ain't saved. They come to church every Sunday, but they're not saved. They carry their Bibles all the time, but they're not saved. The disciples had walked with Jesus for three and a half years, and they were not saved. They were followers. They received salvation when Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Because you can't do what God called you to do unless you are saved by his Spirit. God, Jesus says, as God has sent me, I'm sending you also. And the next thing it does is get them saved. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. And as Jesus is continuing to have conversation with them, he tells them, we're going to show you this scripture. You're going to turn over to Luke chapter 24. Right now. He tells them, I want you to wait Okay, it's the same, still same conversation, but Luke is writing this now. I want you to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. Wait a minute, you just got saved. What more is the Father promising us that I got to wait for? Look what the Bible says here, Luke chapter 24. And behold, I send the promise of my father unto you. But tarry ye here in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. I just got saved. But you're telling me I'm not ready to go do anything yet. Because God got, has promised me power from on high yeah, yeah. to enable me to do something that right now I cannot do. The promise of the Father, of this power, is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Please hear me. A repurposed believer needs this power in the earth. Now, why do I say that? Simply because of this. You don't need an extension, another dimension of the Holy Spirit in heaven. Who are you going to witness to in heaven? Who are you going to tell about the miracles in heaven? Who are you going to lay hands on in heaven? Ain't nobody sick in heaven. Folk are fine in heaven. 
So you don't need no Holy Ghost power to do anything in heaven. We need the Holy Spirit's power as a repurposed believer in the earth. There are things in the earth we have to do that shows that Jesus Christ did come, did live, did perform miracles that the Holy Spirit gives us witness to so that we can do the same thing. Jesus said, the same things I do, you shall do also. And greater things than these shall you do. How is it possible? Holy Spirit power. As a repurposed individual, I cannot become all God called me to be without acknowledging and accepting the full power of the Holy Spirit in my life. Now, I can say I'm lucky. I can say I got all this going on for me. But listen, you, if, you, if that's the way you think, and if you feel that way, you already got your glory. You already have your reward. Because I don't know about you, the longer I've lived, the more I realize mankind has huge limitations. Lord, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit baptism is power to help us be a witness in the earth of what Jesus has taught and what he did in the earth. If you don't believe that, I know some don't believe it. Acts 1, Acts 1 and 8, it's not on the thing, but just turn to this very quickly. I'm going to read it out loud. And many of you already know this. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be a witness of me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. And that final phrase, unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, notice, Jesus didn't say anything about having power of the Holy Ghost in heaven. It's in the earth. We need Holy Spirit power in the earth. Don't think you can go to heaven with a, no, 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 and, and, and display your Holy Spirit power. You don't need it in heaven. Holy Spirit power. And this may be why so many people have hesitated to acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Is because they have been taught by religion and taught by churches that number one, the Holy Spirit power does not exist. It was only for the disciples. And number two, you better watch out. You don't know what kind of ghost you're getting. Might be Casper or somebody. You better watch out. That is ridiculous because that goes to show that people don't know the word of God. If you read the Bible, you will see that this is a promise God has given to the disciples. A disciple is one who follows a teacher and they, it follows the, the salvation that comes by receiving the Holy Spirit. This is an added dimension of the Holy Spirit. And you shall receive power. Now watch this. The word power there in Greek the Greek word is dynamus or dynamus. And from that Greek word, we get the English word dynamite. Dynamite is stored potential power. As long as you have a stick of dynamite, it doesn't do anything. It has the power, it has the ability, but it won't do anything. But if you ignite the wick and watch the fuse burn, don't get too close. When the fuse burns and it ignites the dynamite and the dynamite explodes, Things around the dynamite change. So let's translate that to our lives. We got the Holy Spirit of God on the inside of us. 
we have stored potential power. And there are many folk in the body of Christ who live all their lives with stored potential power. And when God wants to repurpose us by lighting the wick, many of us find ourselves in <clears throat> trying to blow the wick out because we have heard, we have been taught that the Holy Spirit of God or the Holy Ghost is not anything you need because it died out with the apostles. There's more to the power of God by the Holy Spirit than speaking in tongues. That's just a very minor part of the power of the Holy Spirit for the repurposed believer. Glory to God. So we got this stored power on the inside of us. And God wants an explosion to happen. Not only in our lives, but to impact everything around us. When dynamite explodes... There's a rumbling. <laughs> Things begin to shake and quake. The whole temperature changes. Clouds go up and there's wind that blows. Sounds like a move of the Holy Spirit. So if you're repurposed, the whole point of being repurposed is that God can use us in the earth with his power imparted in us so that we can do what God called us to do. Glory, glory, glory. So this same dynamite, dunamis power that was used in creation is available for every believer today. In being repurposed, we need this Holy Spirit power in order to stay current with the Holy Spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit is doing in the earth today, he is doing it in lockstep with the release of his power. If you don't recognize, acknowledge, and receive his power, explosive power in your life, then your being repurposed is going to start going backwards and backwards and backwards. It is impossible for you and I to become all that God wants us to be in our own strength. God says in the book of Jeremiah, before I formed thee in the belly. I knew thee. He knew us at that point in our existence full of Holy Spirit power. But when we came into the earth realm, the enemy tried to snuff it out. You know, let me just share this and then we'll be closing out. You know, the enemy is mad at believers who understand this Holy Ghost stuff. Because, let me tell you why. He was around in, in creation. And, but one thing he saw happening that God was doing. God was investing himself and all of his power into a creation that was not the enemy or anything else in heaven. He was creating something new and different called man. And he was investing himself in man with all of his, no limitations, all his power was invested in man. And the enemy got angry. He's been angry about that. And all he's been trying to do through the years is to cause people not to recognize the power of God that's available on the inside of us. He's concocted all kinds of tales and all kinds of stories, all kinds of theologies, all kinds of theories to prevent people from 
hooking up with the Holy Ghost of God. He doesn't mind you getting saved, but don't take that next dimension and get the power of the Holy Ghost exploded on the inside of you because he knows through you something's going to change in life. Too late. I know the secret now. Glory to God. So none of our power, none of our talent, none of our intelligence, none of our abilities, nothing that we have in ourselves is enough to satisfy what God wants to do in our lives. But there are so many Christians who just settle with themselves. Look at Zechariah, our foundation verses. Let's read these. We're almost finished. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord. And you can substitute your name for Zerubbabel. Praise the assembly, whoever you may, we may be, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. What is God saying? Nothing that you have in your own self. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how intelligent you think you are. I don't care how gifted you think you may be. I don't care what ability you think you have. Where did all that come from? It's not yours anyway. It came from God. So God says, without me, you can do nothing. So I don't, I, listen, I'll, I'll speak. I'll spot you all this stuff. I'll spot you gifts. I'll spot your talent. I'll spot your intelligence. I'll spot you all of this. I'll, and I'll even give you a 15,000 yard start. And I'll wait on you. And I'll still beat you because what you have is not enough to do what I want done in the earth. I don't care who you are. I don't care what your title may be. I don't care where you came from. You and your own self are not enough to do what God wants us to do. So he tells Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by your power. But everything that's going to be done shall be done by my spirit, saith the Lord. So he shifts gears and says, who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? This is Zerubbabel talking. Listen, this dude, now he hyped now. He feeling good about things now because he has insight. Who, oh great mountain, who do you think you are standing before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. He's prophesying, he's prophesying to his problem. Have you ever done that before? He's prophesying to his problem. Let me say that again. He is prophesying to his problem. Why is he prophesying to his problem? Because the great God of all gods had spoken and says, this is going to be accomplished not through anything you do, but by my spirit. So when you hear God give you a, listen, he says, this is the word of the Lord. When you hear God give you a word, yeah, prophesy to your problem. Prophesy to everything against you. Prophesy to stuff that's coming up against you. Prophesy to sickness. Prophesy to disease. Tell them that God has said, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit shall this be done. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And finally, Holy Spirit power has the power to keep us. We fail and falter in life as believers because we don't rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about me. Holy Spirit said, don't you do that. You know what I did? <laughs> Waited to a certain hour. 
Like when the sun would go down, nobody would see me. Any, any more sundowners in here besides me? Let's, let's lift your hand. You're, listen, y'all in church, the Holy Ghost knows any more sundowners in here. Sundowners, sundowners. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this is what I did not know then that I know now that I'm going to depart and deposit in you. Now unto him who is able to keep you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, man. I could stop right there and go home and be good for two weeks. Unto him who is able to keep you. Unto him who is able to keep you. From falling. Now, wait a minute. How did you know I was going to fall? Because you had walked away from the Holy Ghost. You got in your own self, your own strength. But God says, I'm going to remind you. It's unto him. Not you. Not them. It's unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Falling. And will present you without fault or flaws. God, but you don't know where I was going. He is able to keep you and present you without fault or flaws. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Before the presence of his glory. With joy. You know where that joy comes from? Because he's saying, I told you it would work. I told you I could keep you. I told you that I'm a God. I told you how to protect you. I told you to do this. All you had to do is believe in me. I told you it would happen. Glory to God. To the only wise God, our Savior. Oh, Jesus. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. That means he can keep me in the future. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he can keep me in the future. Amen. And amen. My time is up this morning. Can you give the Lord a clap off and a praise today? Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are been repurposed by the Holy Ghost for the purpose of the Holy Spirit. That we can become who God created us to be. And finally, if you don't know how to pray about that, that's okay. Let the Holy Spirit pray for you. According to the will of God. Let's lift our hands before the Lord this morning. What a great an amazing God we serve. Oh, my Jesus, my Jesus. You know, the Bible says everything is naked and open, exposed to him. He sees everything. So we in church as Christians all around the world, we need to just come clean before God. Paul says, those things that I thought were gain unto me. 
I counter them as dung that I may know the excellency of God through Christ Jesus. God for Jesus today. Thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Godhead that's moving in this place today and He's moving where you are, those viewers at home. There could be someone here today or someone that's viewing that you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, listen, this is not emotion, what you're feeling is the Holy Spirit moving upon you, tugging at your heart, inviting you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you are one that has been dealing with depression, and I, I want to speak to young people right now, to young people, please, please hear me. I don't care where you are, tune in to what I'm saying. The enemy is after your mind. He's after your soul. He's out to destroy you. Because God has a call on your life. And what the enemy tries to do, he tries to detour you and your gifts and your call to involve yourself in things for his kingdom and not for the kingdom of God. 
But I want you to understand this. I don't care who you are, what you're involved in. God still loves you more than you could ever imagine. Much more than, than you could ever feel in your heart. God is in love with you and he loves you. And he sent Jesus Christ to die for you. All you have to do is receive him into your heart. If you want to receive Jesus, please pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I am so lonely. I am desperate for connection and for someone to understand me. In all of that, I am still so empty. I need to be refilled or to be filled with you. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for my sins. For the things I'm doing now, the things I'm planning to do, the things I've done in the past. Jesus died so that I could have forgiveness of my sins. Not only did he die on the cross, but he went right into the very pit of hell as a sinner so that when I die, I don't have to go to hell. And he was raised from the dead by the same Holy Spirit we talked about today, by the Spirit of God, now sits on the right hand of the throne of God with all power and authority in his hand. Jesus did that to give me victory in the earth. So I believe in my heart. I'm going to confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ, I give you my life. I give you my heart. I make you the Lord of my life. I don't know what's going to happen beyond this point, but it cannot be any worse than what I've already experienced. So I'm giving you control of my life and my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. If you prayed this prayer, all of us here in the church, let's give them a clap offering of praise and thanksgiving for making this great decision concerning Jesus Christ. As a new believer, today, we, we're going to have communion as a family. So if those of you who are here, if you've given your heart to Jesus for the very first time, you now have an opportunity to receive communion, holy communion, as a child of God. And there's a difference. You will feel and sense a difference. If you're at home and you just gave your heart to Jesus and you want to receive communion, praise God. But you say, I don't have communion juice or wafers. That's okay. Go get whatever juice you have and what crackers you may have. Bring them out. And I want you to follow along with us today because we're going to consecrate the elements so that they can be imparted with the Spirit of God to function as the, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you have them or not. It's the act of what's going on in your heart that counts. God is God. So we'll have communion. Just Thank you for watching Praise Assembly Church Ministries with Dr. Johnny L. York. If you were blessed by today's message and would like a CD or DVD, email us at info at pacmchurch.org. Praise Assembly is a ministry where everyone is welcome. Come join us for our Sunday worship services at 3254 Kernersville Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. For more information, visit our website at pacmchurch.org. See you next week at the same place and time. And remember, it's all about Jesus. Praise Assembly Church Ministries is more than a church. It's more than a place to go on Sundays. Yes, the word is great, the music is outstanding, and the people are nice. But it's more than that. Praise Assembly is a place where everyone is welcome, a place where everyone fits in, and prayer is at the foundation of everything we do. A life-changing church where you can become who God created you to be, where Jesus is the minister of the sanctuary, and people will love you just the way you are. At Praise Assembly, the doors are open, and we are ready to receive you.